kids to bed, dad's home. We are the DWO podcast, representing the dad world order. I am the handsome head of household, Mr. Magnificent, Mike Martin. With me as always, my dad team partner, big guy, big rig, Eric Matthew. What is happening? We also have our third member. We call oh. himself the book back. He calls himself the wrestling t-shirt guy. See this. Right, what's, what's up, up my dude? <laughs> what's up, guys? It's day number. 473, if you're wondering. 473. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't have the new graphic. We don't have the new intro video yet for a Wolfpack interview set. Or Wolfpack, how the heck are you, per se. But uh, we'll get there. Coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah. Anyway. We got to get some good head stills of Cephas. Yeah. I heard he gets some good heads. <laughs> but well, most importantly, we got a special guest, right? Yeah. There he is. Learn how to point, dude. Yes, we do have a special guest. As you can see right below me, the fire starter, Jake Christ, sir. Hello, how are you guys? What's well, up, you know what? I was just about to ask you that. The most important question, how the heck are you? I'm doing great. Uh, it was a crazy night in um, South Bend, Indiana, fresh off of uh, King of the Mountains match. First time I was ever in uh, the King of the Mountain match. Oh, really? Not that good of a uh, concept. <laughs> no? <laughs> was so I was about to say, what is the concept? Probably why it failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, J- was, yeah, Double, J, really doesn't, Double J doesn't have all the best ideas? I mean, I don't know. I, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. You have fun though. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was great. It was a great That's time. Good. I didn't get uh, locked up. Uh, instead of a penalty box, it was um, it was a handcuff to the bottom turnbuckle. Oh my! Uh, instead of two minutes, it was uh, one minute. So, and there was no clock. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Probably probably fine. Fine. Probably probably like my, fine. I feel like my parents used to put me in the corner and then forget. Oh, and I yeah. swear <laughs> I was there for like a day and a half. It's like, I swear <laughs> this has been like three minutes. Can you please uncuff me, please? <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. Legit. Like, uh, everybody had a blast. Uh, it was a packed house. It was uh, for RCW's 13 year anniversary. Oh, wow. So, oh, yeah. anytime. Uh, an independent uh, company has 13 years under the belt. Uh, my hat's yeah. off them on that. If That's I had impressive. Hat, like you got, man, I, I feel like, hold on for a second. Let me go grab a hat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I feel weird here. I feel like we're going to have to send him one now. Yeah, look yeah. at this. Like, you got, there you go, wrestling yeah, revolver. Yeah, revolver. Like, shit. Like, there you might go. as well have a hat on, too. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tip the hat off to anybody in independent wrestling that has 13 years under the belt. Absolutely. There you go, there you go Sammy. Nice uh, price yeah. Yeah. placement right how, there. I was actually going to ask that. How long has, because we just became privy to Wrestling Revolver, I would say, in the past year. How long has Sammy been doing that? Well, Sammy has been promoting shows for as long as I've known him. And I've known him since he was... I think he was like 18, 19 when he came to HWA. Um, he ran a company in Bell Fountain, uh, where he's uh, from, mm-hmm. um, and it was called American Lucha Corps. And I, I wrestled hmm. for him then. So like, uh, wow, like we we've, we've hit it off, um, you know, ever since then. Been uh, the best of friends. But Wrestling Revolver, I think, has been around. Ooh. Uh, it's maybe 2015, 2014, okay. ish maybe, yeah. maybe a little longer. Like, uh, I know, I know we kind of ran, we ran some shows together, uh, when I was running, uh, when I was booking Rockstar. Yeah, okay. That's what Landers so was talking that, about. And that was, and I'm not really good with my dates, to be honest with you guys. Like, I get hit in the head. Oh, <laughs> we've, well, we've, noticed. That we've noticed. We've noticed. I know that's. I, I know. Yeah, you know, kind of. You know. I'm pretty yeah. sure that was my first exposure to you. Was was Rockstar? Rockstar yeah. was my first time ever uh, seeing local wrestling other than NWF or HWA. But that was back when I was young. That was my first adult 
seeing seeing my own indie wrestling was was Rockstar. You know, I I, I kind of feel like Revolver's been around for five, six, seven years ish. I'm not good. I'm I'm it all kind of <laughs> anywhere between because, one and ten. When you when you yeah one and ten ish. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I was just curious because I, I really wasn't like privy to independent wrestling up until about like two years ago. Like I, I grew up, you know, watching WWE and everything like that. And then I kind of became a lapsed fan for a while and then started watching AEW that got me back into it. And then seeing all these people on dark and them talking about them wrestling in indie promotions. I'm like, well, I'm going to go check these out. And that's how I discovered, like, uh, I actually, my first exposure to you was at a warrior show in Indianapolis. Oh, sweet. Um, so that was, uh, and they said like Dayton, Ohio. And I was like, holy shit, I live like an hour from there. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, hey, Mike. And I'm like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's do this. Oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think I just was added to that show last minute because uh, flight cancellations and shit too. Like, uh, but I had, I felt like we had a really good match. I, I don't remember the kid's name, but uh, he didn't it, you wrestle Storm Grayson? Was that who you wrestled? I think <laughs> I, 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 I honestly but don't remember either. Wrestling? Yeah, it was in Indianapolis at like at like a KSC hall. Uh, um, it was just like during the pandemic. No, it was uh, pandemic, beginning. No, this one was beginning of like 2022. It was in like March. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't remember who. This is so it was so yeah, because it was uh, the main. I'm trying to think. The main event was like a a three way tag team match, and it was like Rascals, uh, Dante Leon, Arez, uh, and who else was in that? I, I think top, I think Top Flight was in it too. Being awesome. Oh, it was amazing. Awesome. I just don't remember who I wrestled for. I want to say it was Storm Grayson. I'm pretty sure. Jake, he does this crap to me all the time. He remembers like insane amounts of facts. And I'm just yeah, like. Yeah, I don't remember I got anything. Nothing. I wish right. I had a memory like that. Like I have to yeah. write things down and, you know, That's like, fine. Well, important things. Unless it that, just freshly happened, you know, or if it like really, really, like if a match really stands out to me, like uh, I had a match with Swan. Uh, for Circle Six in Cleveland, it was about six months ago, and that was like one of my favorite matches in my career. Hell yeah! And it was just like it was for no for no apparent reason. We just had, uh, we best of friends have great chemistry, but um, it, the the fans really wasn't there. It was like maybe fifteen twenty people in the crowd. Like nobody shows up for like Circle Six really. So it was. But we just we just had a tremendous match. It was one of those uh, things that everything fell into line. And then um, I fast forward. I had the match at Revolver with Alex Shelley, and that was just special. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was awesome. The, it, that everything was great. The crowd, like the saw it into the crowd. <laughs> the crowd was great. Yes, dude, was. that. No, I mean, we were there for that one, and that I've was that was awesome. I've never anything like that in 21 years uh, that I've been doing this. Like, the crowd just, Dude. it was awesome. Dayton say, came out. I love y'all for that. It was amazing. <laughs> that Dayton we're, crowd definitely loves them some Jake F. and Chris. So. Well, you know, and I, I love the Dayton crowd. The <laughs> What's that? I said, you steal the show every time, man. And since he's wrestling at Revolver, whenever I see Jake Chris is on my card that I'm going to, I'm excited, man, for real. I appreciate that so much. And, yeah. that, and that's that's kind of the the legacy or what I want to be, you know, known for is Jake Chris never phoned it in. He always gave it his, yep. you know, not, I hate talking like I'm third person like that, but fuck, man. We get it. You're a wrestler. So, you're supposed geez. to, bud. Jeez. Yeah. You know, whoa, whoa, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's just it's just one of those deals where that's what I want to be known for, and um, yeah, like I'm just always it's kind of been the motto: go out there and kill it. It's well, that that's energy. all. Go ahead, Mike. It's just high energy from the moment the music hits. You know, I mean, it's just high, high energy, and that's it's always been something you know that's enjoyable to watch. So 
Yeah, I just, I, I'm a ball of energy, I guess. And especially once I get, like, once I get a really good uh, entrance song that I'm, like, really into that, like, hits hard or, like, gets my blood pumping or if it, like, is means oh, yeah. something to me, like, that's, I, it gets me even more into it. I think Bobby adding the popper, the confetti. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's just Where does that keep coming from? <laughs> it that it rained down for, for the whole match. <laughs> we kept saying it throughout the whole match. We're like, how is this still coming down? It's like twenty five minutes in. And like, <laughs> walking out, I'm waking up and I'm like, how? Did get the petty? <laughs> I don't know how Bobby did it, but he needs to bring that magic back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Bobby's got a magic cannon. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. Right don't get that man's head too slow <laughs> uh but no i was just i was gonna say the same thing man every one of your matches that i've seen uh and if you haven't seen a jake chris match go watch one because they're all awesome like every single one is just from bell to bell it you just bring like an intensity to the mat throughout the entire match that's just you can't sit down for it. You feel like the whole thing is just intense start to finish, and I love it. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that so much. Like, that means the world to me, especially when, you know, like, it's being shown and, you know, pe being picked up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. of intensity, though, this match you got coming up on May 6th, man. I, You've got me wanting to drive out to Iowa for one match. Same. <laughs> well, you know, guys, we can carpool. Something. <laughs> my <laughs> wife on the way i just got back from la <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah man that match i will definitely be watching that one on on uh the, the stream because i absolutely need to see that 100 yeah, percent. have you guys worked really together in the past i've never seen you and mox work together Oh, I thought that was, yes, absolutely. Uh, we came up together in the early 2000s. Uh, okay. In the Heartland Wrestling uh, Association in Cincinnati under the Les Thatcher's main oh, event yeah. pro wrestling uh, banner. But the, okay. at that time, uh, Cody Hawk was uh, like the booker and majority owner, I believe. It, yeah. it is, I don't know what how the logistics have. I was just a young kid, you know, <laughs> Let me Fresh, get in here. I was still in high school actually when I walked into uh, HWA. Which funny story? A couple years ago, I was coming back uh, from a show in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm uh, passing one the Evendell exit, and I was it, it brought back memories. Uh, and I was like, man, that's the exit I used to take with HWA, and then it 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 just hit, it just clicked, and dawned on me like, man, I probably messed up so many people's careers back in the day because i was literally a boy coming into a man's world like yeah. back in the day back in those locker rooms like you you look around and like there's a difference between like locker rooms nowadays you know but back then like those grizzled veterans were just that they they they've been around the business they've been around the block a time or two and they seen they seen some shit you could just tell it right their body on their bones the way they're just all crooked and you could you can hear them coming from <laughs> right like a mile away rickety cricketing down the hallway well, like you just didn't wanna, you didn't want to test them you know but like being being a young kid i messed up so much shit and that's when like wwe there was developmental uh, for WWF at the time was developmental and like uh, as a lot of those guys' chance to be seen by the biggest company in the world and here I am being a little kid fucking up everything. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone that I've maybe messed up your opportunity in the past, I apologize. Young young <laughs> Jay Christ or Crazy Jay, like he He's very, very, very sorry. It wasn't for lack of trying. Yeah, I was trying. I mean, it's like I was 90 pounds. It's not like they could have burned me Jeez around. Pete. You know? So. <laughs> and I was probably, I was legit when I walked in uh, HWA. I was probably around 110, 120 pounds. Whoo! With rocks in my pockets. I say the old locker room the sounds like. 
Oh, I was just a small, small lad. Yeah, I, I got my ass kicked every night. <laughs> foot Locker called me. He's like, Jake, can we start a store up in your ass? Because you constantly got a foot in it. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, shit. Um, so how, <laughs> how did, uh, how did this, this match with Mox come about? Was it like, you guys obviously have known each other for a while and he was just like, let's do it. Or did, was from it. My, okay. So from my understanding, uh, I was in a four way, uh, Sammy revolver already announced it. Um, but I, I, I don't, like I said, I mean, Sammy, he's, He's amazing at what he does. He's probably one of the best, yeah. You know, promoters and bookers that I've ever worked with, ever worked for, and like his work ethic and how hard he works just to promote his show. The leg work that that man does just to put into it. Like, so I don't want to speak the logistics of behind the scenes. Oh no, you don't have to get into that. No, I was no, just no, kind of. No. But from my understanding, was is I was in a I was in this four way. We were promoting the four way. Uh, Moxley was um, maybe scheduled to do a meet and greet or an appearance, and then uh, uh, last second he turned into wanting a match. And Sammy was like, "Okay, who do you want to wrestle?" And he picked me. I say I, I thought that's he, awesome. Thought he so handpicked like, you. He he handpicked me and like that's. God, I'm so it's mad. Crazy because I was I was his last match in uh, CZW before he went to WWE. Okay. Oh, wow. Gave him Dean Ambrose. Uh, so like we the history runs deep with this match. Like I said, I when. When Moxley came into HWA, I remember him being in a tag team. Um, and just you know, just starting out and stuff. So I mean, he was. Uh, we we have a lot of a lot of history, a lot of history together. Uh, we we yeah, uh, we'll drive to Iowa even once, more, <laughs> right? We once drove from Dayton to Phoenix, Arizona, for a Dragon Gate USA booking. Thirty-two hours one way. Holy Shnikes. crap! Fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Cephas coming back from L.A. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not fun. That's not fun, guys. That's I, I, talk about a bonding experience, Jim and Allie, dude. You learn a lot about people. Oh yeah. Just in a ten-hour car ride, like imagine thirty-two hours. One. Wow, bike. this guy. This guy poops a lot. Yeah. You know, and, and wrestlers, bro, <laughs> we're constantly throwing protein down, so it's like yep. shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> constantly so it's like can you imagine pro have you guys ever you know been on protein powders or anything? oh yeah no but i hate skyline it is, oh <laughs> bro whenever uh, oh okay okay here a little funny story the reason why i called uh, before i burnt the belts of iwa and became a fire starter or whatever i used to call it iwa shit south weren't we there for that maffy Weren't we there when he when he went like heel? That wasn't that the first show we went to at Revolver. Sorry. I, yes. Mm hmm. Yeah. He was like, "F you, Dayton, and all this." Yeah, and, yeah. You yeah, told us to know. you told us to go f ourselves. It was great. <laughs> you know, and then it became such you know I became such a huge you know beloved figure of Dayton after that. Yeah, and I, I was know. Just speaking, you know, from the heart, I had to pull myself up out of that. Uh, dark depression that i was in you know and i was now that i'm out and everything's the sun is shining you know it's it's amazing it's all how free all that love is. all love well all i mean love. wasn't the situation you weren't just standing up for yourself in that in that situation you were speaking for everybody in the locker room like hey pay up absolutely absolutely <laughs> i mean that's for sure. yeah something like that deserves to be called out and you know if you you know why not if it's re professional wrestling for god's sakes if you're going to do it elaborately you know what better way to do it yeah in your hometown right yep so but for sure for sure that was just yeah what a cool moment to be part of thank you man thank you <laughs> like i i i enjoyed everything uh that i've done like the 6 years of uh booking rockstar on 3rd street was some of my funnest uh, times of uh, of my life, of my career. 
you know, that to just to get to see guys like Zach, Trey, uh, Dez. Uh, those, those guys are incredible, man. So like, many of those guys came through, and like I was able to watch them blossom into the men that they are today, and it's it literally, you know, brings a smile to my face. I love it. Well, these guys talked about their first experience with you, and I know I talked about it uh, before we started recording, but my first experience was a uh, Ring of Honor show up in Dayton, Ohio, uh, at the fairgrounds. And I brought up this experience before because I came up there because I went to high school with BJ Whitmer, and the uh, person I came with was a fan of you and your brother's tag team. And so, like I said, back then, just a boy. <laughs> So in my mind, I'm still ball. just a boy. Yeah. Hey, just a boy. <laughs> well, I mean, I, little even like the you know Briscoe brothers were there, and they were just like gym shorts and and you know the, coming the out the Isaac Leonard Skinner and, and the Briscoe brothers matches are pretty pretty decent uh, go backs and uh, go are back those on up. Uh, oh, I, I actually went back and watched one of those. Uh, what was it Saint Paul, from Saint Paul? It was pretty decent. Remember that being dope. Are those yeah. on Honor Club? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check those out for sure. I I have I had it on DVD, so I okay. don't know if it is. I'd imagine it is on. Uh, Honor oh, I'll Club. find it. Like, I will find it. But I I <laughs> actually went to the garage, like pulled out like one of those portable DVD players, and, like. Blew oh yeah. Dust off and, like, <laughs> you know, put the DVD plug in. plug the plug the red, yellow, just white like, cords into them. Just em. like an old man would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we'll have to go back and reference that. I mean, I just, you know, it's. I, but yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Ring of Honor. No, nah, yeah, you're fine. Dayton, tag. <laughs> so, were you part of Ring of Honor from like you know from kind of their early beginnings? Uh, 2006 or seven, I think, uh, is my first booking for Ring of Honor. Uh, yep. And then it was on and off until I uh, signed a deal with Impact. What was that, 2018, maybe? I don't like him. I'm not good with dates. Only thing, only dates that I'm good with is my children's. Uh, uh, birthdays and my hey. anniversary. Hey, hey those are the important ones. Yep. Yeah, you know, those are the only three. Well, four. I I know the wife's uh, birthday, but I, you better. I, I forget my birthday sometimes. <laughs> well, that's you know that's unimportant. You know, it's so, it's it's theirs it's, that are that are important. It's those three. So you only got so much room up there. You got to make sure that those are locked in. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I need. Like I said, I need to keep track of all this shit and everything else you can google someone's kept track of it somewhere that's <laughs> thank you internet yeah right <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure. gonna look that up right now cage match yeah, I think it but it's on there six is when i uh started in uh ring of honor i was i mean that was just a hell of a locker room there man just kind of a who's who okay. of is eight hartman wrestling association was 2004 i started in 2002 See, you do remember dates. You give yourself yeah. more credit, Jake. July July 27th, 2002 was my very first match in Piqua, Ohio. Piqua wow. Fishing Games for FCW, First Choice Wrestling. I wrestled okay. under Crazy J. I wrestled my trainer, Bodacious. Okay. But he went under, uh, what did he go under? I think he went under Black Magic that night. <laughs> he was dressed in all black and he had he had that K and H uh do you guys remember the old school like uh fabric that wrestling like uh tights would be made out of? It was called K and H back in the day. Like you could pick their fabric out of a lineup. But uh he had that fabric from head to toe, like the old school like with the with the you know, nose up and he's gone. You know, he's very about? generic like character. Old school mask, you know, so like <laughs> that old school mask, and, it, and he's got tears in this black uh, fabric that has uh, like purple, blue, green, like hot, like hot pink colors of uh, like t- <laughs> torn, and you see uh, zebra stripes there. 
It was the funniest gear ever, and like I look like a out of Hot Topic. <laughs> I look like a younger Jeff Hardy. <laughs> That's fantastic. Is that you your idol? Do you said something about the Briscoes? Do you have any crazy uh, out of the ring Briscoe stories? Did you guys spend a lot of time together? Or? Man, uh, not not a whole lot of time. Of course, you know uh, we would get together. You know, like maybe maybe have a a couple of drinks or some food here and there, but not not really. I mean, like we were we were always cool. We were always uh, cordial. We would have we would hug. You know, fucking have great stories. Talk about our families and kids and stuff. But yeah. uh yeah, like that that was I don't have anything uh too crazy about that about any any kind of stories with the Briscoes. Just the crazy ones and the matches that you guys could pull up and look and yeah. so we have we have some good shit together. I always enjoyed working the Briscoes. I've enjoyed everything I've ever seen of them, man. I definitely feel like They're amazing. I feel oh, like they are a diamond in the rough of indie wrestling. Anytime you see the Briscoes in a match, it's worth looking at. Oh, for sure. Well, it feels like bro- you know actual brothers usually make the best tag teams just because there's yeah. you know that innate chemistry. Yeah, look that you at can't... the young bucks. Yeah. yeah, right. Look at the Hardy Boys. Like yep. bringing it back yep. to Jeff Hardy, asking Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy was an idol uh, yep. growing up. Like my my three favorite wrestlers when i was in high school so it's like growing up my favorite wrestler was uh ultimate warrior um macho man and i yeah. like the rock i like the rockers and that that was just because when i was introduced to wrestling we we watched the home coliseum videos and yep. i saw like warrior macho man and the uh and Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty before I saw like Hogan. It's just like, I mean, yeah, I liked Hogan as a kid who didn't, right. but in like high school, it, what got me back into wrestling was uh, RVD, uh, Eddie Guerrero and Jeff. Hardy. Right. It was like, those yeah. three were my guys. Like that reflects in your ring style for sure, brother. You can see that those are your influences in the way that you, the way you captivate with people. It, it, it's, you can see who, made you love wrestling in your oh style. yeah man those those are the three that made me love wrestling fall in love with wrestling all over again you know because like he, i think everyone during high school when they start you know chasing girls or you know put down the comic books or you know they they turn off wrestling a little bit and go to other interests like those are the guys that actually made me fall back in love with wrestling. Cause I always feel like there's a period of fans and or wrestlers where you just kind of fall off a little bit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my period of falling off. Cause when it got real, like when WWF got real, real cartoonish, you yeah. know, I, I just kind of turned it off and I focused on baseball. Yeah, you know, so like I was, I was focusing on baseball, and then all of a sudden WCW hits you with the cruiserweights, and then like uh, you, you wanted to see what Hulk Hogan was doing, cause, and then the Macho Man jumped over, and there was getting all these huge stars, and mm-hmm. then the NWO formed, and it was like holy shit, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then, then, then you thumb through all that, and you actually. Once you cipher through all that, you see who your actual true favorites is. And then I dipped in and fell in love with the uh, extreme championship wrestling. Which and, still gets cheers to this day. Yes. <laughs> and man, like it, Dayton is an ECW town. And mm-hmm. I that's what I used for the, the, the my time during, you know, booking at Rockstar. I used I, I I actually was just like you know what did what made me fall in love with wrestling you know? and I just try to use that kind of shit and you know put it put it to uh, the show and we grew into something special. Yeah, EC I love the ECW, but it was always on like some random time in the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, you get lucky to catch it or you know get it somebody that taped it that. Not the night before or whatever. The, when when e, before ECW, what was it? TNN, TNN. Yeah, yeah. Like it before it got on TNN, it was actually on a public access 
here in Dayton called DATV. Hmm. And um, uh, for future great shows, their shows. <laughs> and the, the guy that put them on was uh, Roger Cox. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but he he was like a he he kind of brought Dayton back or re- pro wrestling, independent pro wrestling back to Dayton in the uh, early 90s. Okay. Like I ran shows out of the Burkhart Center and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys are from, like uh, the the history of uh, pro wrestling in Dayton, but he kind of uh, helped uh, bring wrestling back. Actually, it was a crowd that's sitting. I was sitting in his crowd as a kid, I should say. And uh, I, he passed away uh, a, a while ago, but he was uh, part of Atlas Security for ECW. Okay. And he would take the tapes from Philly and bring them down and he would uh, he would put them on public access. They're hardcore TVs. So like if you, I think if you, uh, I think it was shown on midnight or one, Yep. Uh, on public access and DATV, all due to guys like Roger Cox. Thank you, Roger That's awesome. Cox. That, yeah, I've always wondered that because, you know, I have noticed that Dayton is really a hotbed for indie wrestling, you know, and I was always kind of curious how that came to be. Yeah. I watched those very shows living in Wapak and Lima. Yeah, so, bro. Um, <laughs> as, far as, as far as I can remember, uh, you know, Unified Championship Wrestling, uh, a group called... <laughs> Outlaw Championship Wrestling. Uh, they wrestled in. Are they? They ran out of the John Bryant Community Center in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Hmm. That was such an amazing uh, building. Um, and then um, there was uh, Dayton Championship Wrestling, DCW, and DCW. we we um, we formed that. That was actually ours out of the backyard. Oh, really? crazy, crazy story about me and the kids that I grew up with um, out of Tecumseh Hot Tecumseh. <laughs> we we were out of we, we graduated from Tecumseh High School. We lived in New Carlisle, Ohio. Um, we all loved wrestling. We got together and we we all pitched in every, any kind of money that we could get. We sold stuff like anything we could get our hands on. Like we. Anything we can get our money, so like, hustling. We we get our money together, we throw it together, and uh, we built a ring and welding class. Oh wow! Yeah. And it, it was, <laughs> it's the largest uh, school project in Tecumseh history. But that was all because we went to Outlaw Championship Wrestling at the John Bryan Community Center. We begged the wrestlers, "Hey, can we please, you know, take your take your ring down after the show?" And they're like, yeah, let these fucking marks, you know, take our <laughs> ring down. Her, 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 her. Meanwhile, we're like getting, like, we're remembering exactly how to take the stuff in and out, like what they used uh, to build our own uh, ring and uh, welding class. We throw it in uh, a guy named Dustin Frazier's barn, and uh, we run backyard shows out of there for probably about a year. My cousin was kind of our promoter. He was uh, two, two or three years older than us. Uh, he would at that, at that time, AOL uh, chat rooms became like huge thing and oh, really, yeah. really, really new. Um, and uh, he threw our flyer on, and uh, New Center Seven got a hold of us and asked if we would be a part of their backyard special that, oh. they, that they were doing, and we all agreed. Uh, Fast forward a couple weeks after the special aired, uh, this uh, group in church, they're getting together after the service, and they're all talking about what they've seen on church. This guy named Bill Kovaleski talks about the backyard piece that he's seen. He's like, oh, I wish I knew who those kids were. They look like they got a little bit of talent. Um, the woman that was a part of the group, our commentator, Derek Styles. <laughs> Derek Styles' mom uh, happened to speak up and was like, I know those kids. She <laughs> gave them our info. He came out. like We did a couple matches, and he uh, was like, hey, I'll, I'll train you guys for free if you work for me for two years for free. That was a sophomore in high school. Uh, yeah, it was a sophomore in high school. 
We trained for two years. I had my, actually, I was a, uh, a freshman in high school. I had Jeez. my first match in uh, my junior year. I graduated in 03. That's, that is the definition of the, the catchphrase of Revolver right there. For our generation, by our, by generation. our generation. You yeah. made your own damn wrestling ring. <laughs> we made our own ring. We put it out. We got so, I don't know, we got noticed to where the biggest uh, news station was doing a backyard piece. And they're like, we got to have these kids involved. And they actually like put us over. They're like, wow. well, okay. these kids have their merchandise. They have a fog machine. They have their own ring. Like we had our own merchandise. Like we, we had it together. Like because we, what we did is like we we would charge like two or three bucks, and we would get like 50, 50 to one hundred and seventy five uh, kids to come out every Friday. And then we started we started to lose our asses on our Friday night draw because of football. Because I mean we're kids. We're all gonna go to the football game. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we switched to Saturday, and our draw became double. So it was like, as as like high school kids, we kind of like try like starting to learn like our business of backyard pro wrestling, you know, and, that, and then that just sprouted into uh, DCW, and DCW actually still runs to this day. Wow. And, like they've been around for like twenty one years. Huh. That's crazy, just the amount of happenstance, you know, just in that story alone, you know, with yeah. someone who knows someone is in church and overhears. And, I mean, just those little trinkets, man, are just – The crazy cr- thing about Bill is he trained us for free for two years. It took us, like – it, and, like, the, the reason why it took us, like, two years to, to pick up everything is because, like, we would – old we were kids. And, like, we were growing our backyard uh, wrestling federation, too. <laughs> And so, like, we would get all these kids in, and we'd be like, hey, can, can you start training this guy? Can you start training his cousin? Well, what about, you know, his uncle? Is that cool? So, like, our class became, like, you know, seven intimate, you know, eight, seven, eight, maybe nine of us, and then it became, like, 25. Wow. And then, like, all those kids, it, it would dwindle down. and But, like, it took it took about two years um, huge, we were huge juggalo back in the day, and uh, we had our gathering yep. tickets and like all us kids out in the barn, us backyard wrestlers. We were, had our tickets, and Bill calls me, and he goes, uh, "Hey, I know you have this huge, you know, concert for ICP coming up this weekend, but is there any way that you would skip it and wrestle me in Piqua?" I was like, hell yeah, where do I sign up? <laughs> so like any kids back in the day with the ring in their barn, we held a uh, shoot battle royal. Whoever won got my ticket to the gathering. I gave them, <laughs> I gave them like a $150, $200 free gathering ticket because of awesome. <laughs> it. You regret it at all? Not at all. Look, I mean, there shit. you go. Look at me now. <laughs> no yeah. regrets. No regrets. Well, and then you ended up wrestling for JCW, right? Yeah, for I so it became like a a big thing for me because like I spent so much money. Like as a poor kid, looking back at it, it was like I don't know how I was able to get all this money for these CDs and the jerseys and the posters. We're in the same boat, dog. Yeah, same <laughs> boat. Like, I know. <laughs> Spent between <laughs> gas money, shows, you know, Hustling. t-shirts, all tattoos, everything. Like yep. Probably thirty to forty grand, you know, high school kids. <laughs> so, wait. like, as I started getting booked with ICP, I was like, I'm gonna make my money back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Listen, I poured so much money into this. I'm wrestling. I'm, I'm making it back. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you wrestled, but I'm, I'm. The reason I keep looking over here, I got your cage match pulled up. So if you're bad with dates, just type in your name on cagematch.net. They got all your matches. Um, <laughs> well, most of them. Well, most of them. But yeah, JCW 2010, 12, 13, 14, 15 to 2010 to like 2016, you wrestled consecutively. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, you made your money back. 
Have you worked against Corp Corp Robinson before? Are those I matches? Did. I didn't. I don't think. Okay. Don't okay. Think. Like I, I did a lot of stuff with Necro and Pondo. Okay. And we did a lot of stuff with the uh, Tomaselli uh, brothers as the uh, hate. They were the haters though. Okay. So, I really, I was super excited to meet Pondo at that Cincy wrestling show. I, I, I couldn't believe he was even there, man. That was pretty cool for me. I used yeah. to pick him all the time in the video games. Pondo's so. awesome. Uh, Wrestle Two Tough Tony. Yeah. For JCW. So I mean, yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Like, cool. I, I loved, I loved uh, my time with JCW. Um, the gatherings uh, actually kind of took over a little bit of um, the training school because they would have like a training like gimmick for the gathering, like juggalos to get in the ring. And if you're ha you got three minutes, uh, two, two and a half to three minutes to impress the crowd. And if you didn't impress the crowd and they started to shit on you, you immediately had to just get out of the ring. And Showtime sure like, apologize your ass. <laughs> so i look i'm i'm waking up from the tent and i'm like i'm hearing commotion i walk towards the wrestling uh st this wrestling stage and i look up in this juggalo that's called shit stain he's got he's holding on the top of the rafters of this huge tent i don't know how the hell he got up there like i said i'm just like walking up yawning <sighs> Like, holy shit, what's going on up there? And next thing you know, he just lets go and he goes into a leg drop onto his friend. And it's like a huge commotion. And I'm like, like, huge. Like, what is happening right drop. now? I'm yeah. Like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> like, the wrestlers are popping. They're going huge. And I was just like, oh my God, why is this going on right now? I'm yeah. Like, so like I go see to. I go to Vampiro because I knew he was really good friends with uh, Joe. And I was like, uh, <coughs> instead of like encouraging the juggalos and these kids to get in the ring and like beat themselves up and like get hurt and yeah. fuck their, their whole weekend up. What if we took the, the committed ones that came all weekend and we actually taught them the basics of pro wrestling and we we turned it into and we turned it into like a battle royal. Oh, yeah. like, oh that's cool. And, that's and a good that's idea. What it, that's what it actually ended up becoming. Because I mean, anyone that knows anything about the gatherings or being a juggalo, if you're if you're willing to sacrifice your weekend of doing drugs and drinking or you know whatever the thing is that that you're into as a as a juggalo like if you're willing to sacrifice those things and come learn like the basics of pro wrestling and not get hurt while you're doing this to yeah. be a part of like a, the big main show and bloody mania the last night i think i thought it was way better idea than you know, here's two guys. You got two and a half minutes to do whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> I, you know, you can get hurt. You know, we can shut this whole thing down and ruin everybody's time. Yep. If you break your neck. You know, because, I mean, that's basically, I, I know that's extreme, but a guy fell legit like 30 or 40 feet from the top of this, like. Into a leg drop into a leg i mean it was it was impressive yeah let alone him getting hurt how about the guy that's getting the leg drop his from 30 fine, feet in the air i shot the shot off the top of his head that's, right that's <laughs> final issue still today probably why does my back man. hurt so bad yeah <laughs> imagine imagine what's how shit stains back feels right now oh it's terrible <laughs> i often wonder that yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna wonder it to the end of my days. Now I'm just randomly gonna think, like, man, I wonder how sh shit stain on shit Facebook. Doing, I wonder how shit stain's we doing. Have to figure out if shit still alive. Anybody that's watching this, if you know shit stain, have him reach well, out to us. We need to know how his back's Mike, doing. Mike, we'll clip this later and I'll post it in the Juggalo groups. We'll find. There shit you go. Yes, we'll find shit stain. <laughs> Is shit stain okay? <laughs> That'll be a reason to, to for you to come back on, Jake. We can we can have a, the confrontation with shit stain. Hey, I'm ready to come back on anytime you guys want. I'm yes. hell yeah, man. Anytime. 
this has been hilarious and fun. That's what we try to do, man. Get on and have a good conversation. Not bad about wrestling, about life. Hey, man, and I am all of that rolled into one. Exactly. Dad <laughs> wrestling life. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of... Got... Go ahead. Go ahead. How many kids you got, Jake? I have two. Two? I you have a 19-year-old. I know I'm young, right? 19-year-old <laughs> and a 7-year-old. Okay. Both with the same with the same woman. I'm still with with her. Twenty one years. Hey. There you go. Hey, that's awesome. I've been with my wife for thirteen. I respect that a lot. Yeah, man. Yeah. Not, Is she in the business too? A lot of people could say that these days. At Nevea. Okay, she, that's what I thought. We're actually she she's been like the last couple of years. She's kind of been taking a step back, but uh, I booked oh, the seven year old. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's. She's more into uh, coaching basketball with with the seven year old and stuff like okay. that. And more into you know going to the kid sports where you know once I start to pump the brakes and slow down on wrestling, you know I'll, I'll actually be getting in following suit with the with the old wifey poo. Yeah, so, there you go. Some bad well, duty. Uh, yeah, but that's not to like another you know fifteen twenty years. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got to get another, you know, 15, 20 years left in me, boys. There you go. We don't feel so, old. My oldest just turned 22 today, so. Ooh, so yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have guessed you had a 22. But I got the grade. Of, I got the grade. Of how, how, old, how old do you think he is? Well, I just. My guess would be 40-ish. It has to be. He's got a 22. Hey, guys, 43, 43, yeah. 43. <laughs> I had her when I was 43. Yeah. 43, yep. You wear, you wear it well. You Thank wear you. it well. I'm like Kentucky bourbon, buddy. I just get better with age. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. So, so um, I, I have to say I did uh, I actually sent a text to Mike that night when I was watching ROH, and I saw you and uh, Man Scout on uh roh that was that I, that was a surprise me i was i was just watching it and i saw you guys pop up and i took a picture i'm like mike they're on roh i was That's like that was rest. awesome yeah so dude. how uh how did that come about well um i got contacted by aew to do uh the nutter center show mm -hmm. and uh wrestle juice and i felt like it went really really well Hell yeah! And, um, after the before I left, the uh, you know it was like you, I'm not an asshole. I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna leave during the show. So I'm gonna wait until after everything's done, make sure they were cool with everything, um, and they invited me to the Orlando tapings. Uh, so then when I went and did the Orlando tapings. Uh, it's actually um, I kind of just pulled last minute to. Like, hey, uh, throw your gear on. Uh, you're about to be on in a couple minutes or a couple <laughs> matches. And uh, really, wrestling, you're wrestling uh, with uh, Jake Manning. I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the man scout. And then I ran to the locker room, threw my gear on real quick, and I uh, ran back. And legit, it was like, we got a low gin of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that I, well, that's what that was. I kind of did a double pop because I saw you, and then I saw Jake in the corner reading his reading yeah, his Man Scout manual, and yeah, it I just I was I was so happy. I was like trying to get in on that. He was showing me some shit. We we had like we thought we had all the tips ready to go, but you know. <laughs> we always see him working on. working the AEW shows, like uh, we we'll do meet and greets or stuff like that. Security always, guard, yeah, security guard. Yeah. And we He's always a, pop for him. Dude, he'll be in Iowa, I believe, right? Yeah. I think it's so, yeah. Iowa yep. always has dope cards, dude. Dang it. Yeah, so How long is that drive from Cincinnati? Dayton does. Dayton does have <laughs> great cards. Uh, but it, end up going. <laughs> bro, it's, I think it's like eight and a half, nine hours from Dayton. Oh, that's such a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big commitment. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole oh, no, man. I might be there. The <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll confer. Let's yeah. see. I'll probably just be in the dad den watching it on fight. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't like being live. I know it's yeah, you, yeah. yeah. I know. See, that's why we love date. That's why we love Dayton, though, because we can literally get off of work and drive up there, and we're there in an hour. So well, that's yeah. so awesome. Dayton, and like I said, Dayton's such a hotbed and such a great town for wrestling. Like, always has been. Yeah, but, I mean, hell, Troy, Detroit, Ohio, Cincinnati which is just well. north. Got that house show. Yeah. What was that? Cincinnati as well. They've got a hell of a hotbed down here. Always Future great been. NWF. Yep. Yeah. There's a yeah, lot of good stuff so, here. WF. Hats off to them too. Like twenty yep. something years, twenty five probably. Yep. Maybe I'll longer. be seeing them May six. My, my buddy Pompano Joe's wrestling. Joe. Yeah. Joe. Everybody's That's homie. Favorite homie. Yeah. <laughs> Ask him who gave him that. <laughs> oh, really? See? Oh, yeah. there you go. Origin okay. story. <laughs> yeah, you want uh, that? That comes from Rockstar on Third Street. Like uh, crazy stories. Like sometimes when you're booking, so I booked almost 400 shows for Rockstar in six years. So like, we ran every Wednesday and the first Friday of every month, and then you know there would be shows like spot shows here and there, you know, or whatever. So it was right. Close, I think it was like. 388 shows I ended up booking for Rockstar wow. with that time. So as a booker sometimes um, when somebody calls off or like they're, they're not there one week, you kind of you know, you look at your last card you, you see you put shit together you know, you're throwing the matches up and like Pompano Joe kind of just kept uh, slipping my mind for a couple couple weeks in a row to where I think it was like five or six weeks in a row where I was like, oh shit, I forgot about popcorn <laughs> Joe. And I would run, I would run to the office and like, oh shit, what match can I make a three way? Fuck. So then um I I kinda like hid it from I felt I kinda tried to hide it from him for a while and then I admitted it to him. I was like, Joe. I'm sorry, man. Like, I just keep fucking forgetting about you. But here's what I'm gonna do. I want to turn this all into a fucking an angle and make it into a thing. And we did like a, a home alone version of like so like every Friday we would we would dim the lights and we had a uh, like a, a we would throw up videos and, and uh, we had a home alone video where every, all the wrestlers laughed and Papa No Joe was. In the oh, arena man. alone, oh, yes. and it turned in. I, I turned it into like a. I did a. I did two or three shows where it was uh, let's make a deal, the rock star ver, uh, style, and I was like Wayne Brady out there, yeah. suit and all. <laughs> and I, I so like um, doing the, all this stuff with um, with uh, Joe building up to uh, uh, everyone's favorite homie pay per view, and to where you know. But Papa No Joe just kept messing up and dropping the ball or fucking up. Like so, the let's make a deal thing it was like you either get a shot at this title or or you know you get uh, eight hundred dollars a shot of this title, or you know behind what curtain number three and he picked curtain number three you pull it back it was big zonk sign with like John Murray's fat belly like, <laughs> just laying there passed out with sat squats you know dancing next to him you know what I mean so, like I kind of just built it, built it up to where it was like he was getting forgotten and forgotten until like this final big payoff to where I think he won like the American Lucha Corps like the secondary title or something like that at Rock. Oh yeah. Can't really remember, but like he became everyone's favorite homie and became like super over after that. And just because so I was an asshole and forgot him like seven or eight shows in a row. <laughs> he uses it to this day. <laughs> That's awesome. He's, I love that. Everyone's favorite homie. <laughs> He's everyone's favorite homie now. Yeah, yeah it's just he actually uh, <laughs> Cephas actually did one of his videos with him wearing uh, the bad dude shirt. Yeah, him and him and Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah. Like all like I I don't know back back on Third Street Rockstar locker room every week was just it was stacked. There was nothing that could duplicate that here in, in Dayton on a weekly basis. Like rock like. You know, Revolver comes and they have 
these awesome, great mega shows, you know, now kind of took over where uh, Rockstar left off gear and, you know, the pandemic killed uh, Rockstar. But yeah, they, uh, like, I, Sammy and Revolver coming into date and picking back up where we left off is is amazing film. we're certainly glad i mean we get to see people we never imagined that you know we get to not only see live and in person but you know get to meet and have a conversation I mean, with guys like awesome. you know brian cage you know i know he he had like flight issues last yeah. time mm-hmm. yuda you know, he, he's you yeah yuda yeah you know fucking evil e- yeah. evil uno like me you know, me you yes please yeah dude. <laughs> Marina Shafir. Shut up and take my money, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Literally every... They just announce a Dayton show in like the first like... They don't even have to announce a match. Just like the first talent announcement. I'm like, yep, I'm going. (laughs) (laughs) Buy the meet and greet and our seats. I mean, literally, that's the the next one in Dayton, June 17th. They announced SGC is going to be there. I'm like, yeah, I got to go. I'll be here. Immediately. (laughs) They, I mean, they really don't even have to announce talent. I'm just going to go. Like, I'm <laughs> not know, going to miss these shows. Yeah. Amazing show. They all can't miss at this point. Right. Yeah. The first, what was the first one we went to? Stranger Things? Yeah. Yeah. God. Stranger Things was the first one we went to. And then since then, I think the only one we missed since then was uh, Sunday Fun Bay. And oh, I think that was, we had, I know we had, I think I had, I, I was working that weekend or something like that. But uh, everyone, every other one. Uh, yeah, we we don't miss them. No, My first uh, Curry, but I missed last time because I was in Los Angeles. But they were there to represent at least. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah that that that, that Moxbury that Moxbury show was oh that was so much fun. Yeah, That's that was he uh, knocks him out of the park, man. He knows how. Yeah. to he knows what Dayton wants. He knows he knows what he wants. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's and that's the biggest thing is like booking just great cards as a wrestler where you look back at it and like and that's what I try to do with everything too is like you look back at your card and like would I pay my hard earned money to come watch these people wrestle? And if it's a yes, then your people are gonna come. What? And that, you know what the other really good thing that he does is? Is the first after the first couple? I was like, you know what? After after the first couple, I probably don't need to get the meet and greet anymore because you know I've 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 already met most of these people, whatever. And then there's always one or two people that he brings in for every show that makes me buy that effing meet and greet. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, if I'm kudos, honest, like, kudos, like, I didn't Sammy. know a lot of the people on the card for that first revolver show. You know, a few here and there. Um, so you know, the the allure of you know Mox being there was big, but. Those shows, I became a fan of so many, you know, if not everybody I've seen that night, you know, people that I weren't familiar with. And now it's like, you know, I don't I don't need the, you know, the so-called high profile people anymore. Like, I love everybody that's just a part of this. And I know that that show is going to be a banger every single time, no matter the cast yeah. of characters. I, a big one that fits that that category for me, Mike, is Crash Jackson. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was like, oh. I want to see anything that guy's on. Like, I, yep. I, you captivated me. I said that, uh, I think it was our last, uh, one of our last shows that we did, is I had no idea who Crash was before I came to Revolver. Not a clue. And after that first Revolver show, I was like, I, I hope he's on every card. Because <laughs> I I love Crash. I love watching him. I love watching him throw his whole lot of dude around. And it's great. <laughs> it, it it is. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Crash too, and to see him progressing, he's one of the kids when when he was coming up, like he came through Rockstar, and he stayed in okay. Dayton. He's I think he's from Kentucky area. So mm-hmm. Yep. Area. I, I maybe West Virginia. Shit. I don't. Know. It's Kentucky. Uh, same difference, right? Kentucky. Yeah. Hey. He's no. close okay. enough to the border. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Kentucky. <laughs> Virginia, but when he was coming to Dayton, you know, I was made sure it was like, all right, let's let's keep this guy around, and he was able to, you know, turn into a whole lot of dude and what he is now, and I'm very happy to see him progress into the man that he's progressed into. That's got to be so I, rewarding to see. It is, man. Like seeing guys like Crash, you know, Zach, Myron, you know, yep. oh yeah, Trey, Trey's. Trey's insane. Unreal. Trey's Dude, I love him so much. We were talking about this the other day. Myron hits that running 
cutter to the outside. I've seen him do it like three times, and it pops me every single time. He's so good. Oh, my gosh, dude. So good. So good. Very, 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 very good. Very good. Um, and then, you know, not, not just the, uh, the wrestling town, obviously that's the biggest part of the show, but, uh, we had, uh, Roland, uh, Tussle Mania on uh, a couple weeks ago. That guy is freaking awesome, man. Like Roland, uh, he's probably one of my favorite people that I've met recently in, uh, the business. Well, I've not met recently. I've known him for a very long time, but like became very close friends recently right i, I feel like i love Roland so much like i i would i'd i'd walk to the end of the earth for Roland if i had to he's got he, such a cool vibe and just such a cool energy to him man so just, mellow like, yeah yeah I, I love like a mellow you know i, I love the mellowness of people you know what I yep. mean? yeah you're mellow and you're cool and fun to be around like i want to be around you yeah. well and that, that's the thing like it shows of, Jake of, sounds like we're hanging out, dude. Out in the ring. <laughs> right. Well, that's like it shows like you're always, you know, taking pictures of like, you know, or pictures, videos of, you know, wrestlers doing everything. At that last show, I was like, oh, hey, there's Roland. And I started taking pictures of him, taking pictures of other people. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Hi." laughs> um, just such a cool, cool guy, man. You can just tell how passionate he is about just the people that he works with. Yeah, he needs to get his flowers more than what he does. Like, he's such a great, vital, vital tool to independent wrestling. It's and any wrestler that's looking at this, you need to get a hold of Tussle Mania. You need to get a hold of Roland and start giving him your footage so he can edit your shit up and pimp you out. Let Dude, every out. single one of his videos is like... Because, I mean, you see a lot of... And I'm not trying to like downplay any of the other, you know, videographers or anything out there because there's a lot of really talented people. But I told Roland this when we talked about it. Like, I always know when I'm watching a Tussle Mania video. He just has he has a certain style that, and it looks awesome every time. Yeah. And I just I I I love that. It's kind of like his little artist mark on everything. And it just, it's, it's great. I love the it. People that you could tell that it has their touch on, you know, guys like Roland, I believe Sammy has his own, like, mm -hmm. you know, edit tweak. It's so, it's so good. It's just his own. You know what I mean? You could tell, Oh shit. Roland did that. Oh, Sammy did that. Like those are two guys that stand out to me. That's, that's why I always go to those two dudes. Like, Hey, can you edit this for me? <laughs> the, the last, the, uh, before that, I was going to uh, SPO. I was going to Sean, and he oh, edited yeah. a couple uh, uh, wasted videos for me when I was doing like the Kendo stick shot stuff. It was kind of cool. But, Hell yeah. yeah. Rest Crimson Mask shot, shot that uh, Sean Patrick Russell got was amazing. I think it's your, uh, your profile picture now. Oh, yeah, dude. That's yeah. I wanted to use that for our like promotional thing, but I thought, yeah, no, nah, well, no, I was afraid. That I don't, I don't know. Ready. I don't know if YouTube's not going to like that or not. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Worry. That's... Yeah. I don't know. They flag, they flag a lot of weird shit, man. Yeah. I sent my dad the artwork and I was like, this is who we're interviewing today. And I was like, well, this is, and this is what he looked like last time we seen him in action. <laughs> He's like, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> dad. Yeah, he <laughs> it was awesome. Um, but yeah, I just I I noticed that uh, you know Roland had shot a lot of stuff for you. I just wanted to give him another shout out because he's just been super super cool to us, and I really appreciate everything that he does. And also seeing him get actually uh, get involved in a match at the last show that was awesome too. Yeah, that was uh, great stuff. I was like, put put Tussle down. <laughs> <laughs> he just like Fulton picks him up and that's like the look on Roland's face was just like put me down put me down <laughs> it was so good man I loved it he popped so hard for that yeah. Fulton's such a yeah. monster too man <laughs> Fulton's great man I love I love me some Sawyer Fulton yeah, yeah. You, got, you guys got history yes we do the little yeah. OVE <laughs> yeah, man, he's in the best uh, shape of his life too, man. He's looking right? looking really good. 
Well, that actually, that made me feel really good at the last show because somebody mis- uh, mistook me for Fulton for like half a second. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it was great. That's somebody was like, oh, there's two Fultons. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not really even so on close. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have a, a large gut, large dad gut. I am not nearly as athletic. He's um, foot tall. <laughs> but, you know, thank you to random fan that mistook me for Fulton for 0.25 seconds. I appreciate it. Um, well, uh, I don't really have uh, much else, but we're definitely going to have to have, have you back on here, Jake. This yeah. uh, this was absolutely so much fun. Maybe next um, we'll go through some of that uh, cage match uh, history and maybe take buddy, a I, brief I, crash course of my own career. Cause some of that I stuff know, man, I really, really forgot, man. Like, Oh, trust me. I, I was looking through it, and some of the matches you've had, I I want to talk about for sure. Yeah, sure. Like um, 20, 21 years of doing this, man. Like, knock on wood, like, haven't got injured or injured anybody, not taking any time off. Nobody could say that. No. Right? That's, a, that's a very impressive. I tell you yeah. what, we'll do homework. We'll pick some of the, the matches that stick out to us, and we'll find them and find a way to watch them that you way. That is great. I'll, I'll come on. Hit me up. Quit. <laughs> I was like, what is that noise? <laughs> Bad boy Briscoe. Bad no, boy my, Briscoe. My dog freaking. Hey, it, it shows you this is a real podcast. Did you see I'm not, he's like <laughs> humping something in his cage or something. Briscoe! That's like. That's the that's right. Right. Yeah. Let's after the Briscoes. Let's hear it. It is. It's going to be in a podcast and won't be a true podcast. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing right now, um, but yeah, he is. He is. He is named after the Briscoes. It was. Uh, I have a cat. Named- he- What's that? I have a cat named Muda. Muda, there you go. Yeah. Right on. All right. Yeah. Give a painted he's all, face. He's all gray, and he's got like or he's got like a white face and gray patches, and he's got like a little gray patch like right here. Oh, so perfect. Like yeah. Muda it looks like he just spit the mist, and that's like. Yeah coming down oh, dude, that's so awesome. awesome pretty cool that's legit all right well hell yeah man uh can't wait to have you back on appreciate you coming on here um as always we are the dwo podcast i am big rig he is mr magnificent mike martin he is wrestling t-shirt guy cephas he has been jake christ appreciate you coming on here man um until next time top dads out yeah, 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 yeah.